so elasticity so what do you mean by elasticity elasticity is nothing but flexibility or or like you know something which is like uh, there can be a contraction and expansion contraction and expansion what is this all about and why it has come here see elasticity is nothing but the behavior of a dependent variable when uh, with respect to an independent variable that means demand is something which is a dependent variable and it depends upon price which is a independent variable okay dependent independent so what are we going to see in elasticity of demand is how the demand changes in case we can also generalize that for supply how the demand or supply of certain product changes with respect to changes in price that means how your demand or supply for a certain product would respond with changes in price okay that is nothing but elasticity of demand so the responsiveness of demand or supply with respect to changes in price is elasticity of demand and we are going to study about that now elasticity in general refers to relationship between two variables price elasticity of demand explains relationship between change in quantity demand and change in price so how this changes if this changes so if price went up by 10% let's say okay then how is the quantity demand going to behave is it going to fall by the same percentage that's the question no it is not going to happen always sometimes it may fall by the same percentage sometimes it may fall by a very high percentage sometimes it may fall with a lower percentage that means with changes in price let's say the price has went up by 10% so demand in this case responds uh, like you know very less the responsiveness in demand is very less that means despite of increase in price the decrease in demand is very minimal uh mm, decrease in demand we were discussing right okay so when the price has gone up by 10% the quantity demanded uh, would definitely fall okay fall yeah yeah that's okay i can keep it 20% so the fall is how much percent if the fall is 5% will very minimal fall if the fall is 20% very very high fall and if the fall is just 10% it's like you know uh, it's very similar right uh, as the demand has as the price has increased by 10% the demand has also fallen by 10% equal uh, change we can say okay almost equivalent change so here the change was very less that means the responsiveness of demand was very less responsiveness of demand is very high responsiveness is equivalent so here when the when with a very small change in price the demand changes to a very high extent we can say that is elastic elastic demand what we call that elastic demand that means price is changing just by 10 per, just price is changing just by let's say 5% demand is changing by or falling by 50% 5% increase in price leads to 50% decrease in demand highly 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 elastic 5% increment in price leads to just 2% uh, decrease in demand highly inelastic that means there is no change at all that means a uh, very negligible change price has increased but the demand has decreased very less you generally see that in case of certain essential goods which we want uh, like very essentially in our life life right okay so even though the price is increasing or whatever we won't compromise on such goods right now and the when the price falls by when the price falls by let's say price increases by 10% the demand falls by 50% generally for luxury goods so when uh, the price increases luxury in the sense except certain jewelry like diamonds or something like let's say something like some particular goods like watches so, uh, like watches are not like something which many people if they don't wear they are not going to survive it's nothing like that if you don't wear then also it's all right if you wear then also it's all right in today's world we have phones right in that also you can see the time but certain people what happened there are certain people who like uh, buying watches or certain people 
when economy is you know booming everyone wants to uh, uh, do some other kind of shopping so people will drastically not go and buy watches because the price has risen up by 10% so very very high fall in the uh, like uh, you know uh, quantity of watches being sold so price elasticity of demand is a measure of extent of change in market demand for a good 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 that is good good is nothing but what you are buying or something so price elasticity of demand is a measure of extent of change that means if demand is changing by some percentage to what extent uh, sorry i'm not I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry if the price is changing by certain percentage if the price is increasing by certain percentage to what extent the demand will fall very highly it will fall or very low it there will be very low uh, fall in demand that is what you're going to see so price elasticity of demand is a measure of extent of change in market demand for a good response uh, for a good in response to change in price so they are saying this particular aspect ped measures to what extent okay uh, the demand for a good will uh, like respond to changes in price so the demand for a good is said to be inelastic when changes in price have a relatively small effect on quantity of good demand that means you know the price is changing it is going up but the demand the quantity demand is not like responding very aggressively that means the 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 quantity demand has just fallen by some percentage or very small effect in the fall in quantity demand that is inelastic so very small effect in quantity demand with respect with high change in price inelastic reverse is elastic a small change in price is leading to very very large uh, it, like it, it, it's 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 having a large effect on the quantity of good demand that means a small change just 1 rupee change in in the, in the price of a product is leading to very high fall in the quantity demand of the product okay so that is inelastic that is elastic elastic okay so again i'll write 1 rupee the price has increased by 1 rupee and previously like suppose something we used to buy for 10 rupees something we used to buy for 10 rupees something in the sense let's say it's chips packet just a example okay chips is essential it's a food right uh we used to buy uh, something uh, we can say non essential goods mm, what we can take up some uh, decoration flower okay so when it is available for 10 rupees we used to buy 10 10 units now 1 rupee increment in this decoration flower see decoration is what if you decorate okay if you don't decorate that's okay it doesn't matter so 1 rupee increment so the price has become now 11 rupees now from 10 units you just want to buy 2 units so very very high uh, like you know large extent the quantity demand has fallen by large extent this is elastic now 1 rupee change that means 11 rupee it has become and uh, like uh, from 10 rupees you are just uh, from 10 units you want to buy just 8 units so this is inelastic uh change in uh, price has led to very less change very small change in quantity demanded okay now so there can be one thing if the price elasticity of demand is less than 1 that means you have found you have calculated the elasticity of demand it is 0.8 it it will be a indication so price elasticity of demand is less than 1 okay okay less than 1 that is 0.8 is less than 1 it is it is inelastic so here you can see right uh, from 10 units i am just buying 8 units okay so very less change if the price elasticity of demand is more than 1 it shows very high change right so elastic that means 1.8 more than 1 elastic if price elasticity of demand is equal to 1 unitary elastic that means 
one rupee increase in price leads to just like from 10 units will buy just uh, you know almost you know like uh, the change is not that drastic like i said now i i give an example right 10% increase in price is leading to 10% uh, like uh, decrease in demand almost the same if 10% increase in price is leading to 30% decrease in demand then it is elastic if 10% increase in price is leading to 5% decrease in demand in elastic this is unitary elastic okay that is what and then we have come and we can take the formula also so the formula for price elasticity of demand is change in current demand as a percentage of original demand divided by change in price as a percentage of original price so i will tell you very simple so let's say for 10 rupees i was buying 10 units now the price has gone up by uh, like uh, 100 percent 20 rupees i am buying price has gone up so quantity demand should fall right uh, i am buying two units okay now elasticity of demand how come you can calculate so the formula is this was this was p1 this was q1 this is p2 this is q2 okay so the formula says percentage change in price by percentage change in demand okay uh, sorry percentage change in demand by percentage change in price percentage change in quantity demand by percentage change in price so the formula is percentage change in quantity demand so 10 minus 2 Previously, I used to buy 10 units and I'm buying 2 units. Divide by 10 into 100. Whole divided by 20 minus 10 by 10 into 100. So you can get the elasticity of demand. Just calculate and tell me. less than one so if it is less than one it is what if we get less than one we discuss right now right it is inelastic correct okay did you follow that did you understand hello yes sir okay okay just calculate this one and tell me what's the answer So what are you doing here? The price of a good is 1.20 pounds per unit. Annual demand is 800,000 units, right? Market research indicates that an increase in price. That means it is like it was 1.20 pounds. For this much, the demand was 800,000 units. 
that the price is going to increase by 10 pence. It's going to become 1.30 and that will lead to a fall in demand by 70,000. So they have given the change, right? So change in demand is 70,000. Correct or wrong? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, so change in uh, like percent. First, we'll find out the percentage change in quantity demanded. And then we'll find out the percentage change in uh, like price. OK, so. Annual demand is this. Fall in demand of 70,000 units. So 70, so almost how much units have fallen? Previously, it was <coughs> 8 lakh units, right? Fall in demand of demand of 70,000 that it's not saying demand by or demand to fall of 70,000. So if the demand is falling by uh, falling to 70,000, then what's the uh, like uh, percentage change? Hello. Hello. Yes. Sir. What can be the percentage change? See, pre your actual demand was 800,000 units, right? So price has increased by 1.30 and it will result in a fall in demand of 70,000 units. So what shall we what shall we do here? They did not say anything like it will become 7 lakh 30,000 units or something like that. They directly gave the change, right? Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. They did not say that it will become 7 lakh 30 or something. They directly gave the change. So this divided by the total unit. So we'll see how much is the change. How much is this in this? 8.75%. The fall is of 8.75%. Now. Now next case percentage change in price we'll see. This is a percentage change in demand. Percentage change in price. It was 10 pence, right? Uh, the change is of 10 pence. Increase, the change is 10 pence. Okay. Divide by the actual was 1.20 into 100. 8.33%. Okay. So quantity demand is falling because of the rise in price. So now elasticity. So it is falling, right? So 8.75, nothing we can just put it, divide by 8.33 into 100. Just tell me what is the elasticity of demand? Hello? What is the answer? Hello? Yeah. So it's like already these are in percentages. We can directly take them as percentage. Cancel 8.75 by 8.33. It's 1.05. It is more than one. It is elastic. OK. Just finish this. Yes, sir. Okay. So calculate elasticity of demand when price is initially 1.30 and price when the price falls, the quantity demand will increase, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when the price is like, you know, uh, elastic when the price is initially this, Okay, no, no, the price is falling. From 1.30, it has become 1.20. When the price decreases, the quantity demand should increase. So what was the actual demand? See, now you understood, right? First case was the, <clears throat> the annual demand was this, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> 
the price has increased by this so the annual demand will decrease by 70000 units that means that means from 8 lakh it will become 7 lakh 30000 right now the price here was high it was 1.30 previously the price was 1.20 and the price has increased the quantity demand has decreased right now the price is high and the price is falling what does it mean the demand will increase right correct yes or no that means from 7 lakh 30 thousand the demand will go to 8 lakhs okay so we will see the difference the difference is 70 thousand divided by what was your original demand previously 7 lakh 30 right into 100 so what is the answer here 9.59 percent rise okay rise in demand that means from 7 lakh 30 it has become 8 lakh you can clearly see the rise in demand okay and then what is the change in price 10 by the original price is 1.30 0 0.10 by okay so this is 7.69 percent fall now we will take the quantity demand 9.59 divided by 7.69 into percentage percentage. Tell me what is the answer? Okay, what's the answer? Calculate and tell me. See, please do the calculation. Otherwise, then what, there's no interaction between you and us. Nine point five nine by seven point six nine. What is the answer? See here. One point. One point. Right. One point two five. Okay. That means it is elastic. Right. Shall we move forward? Yes, sir. I'm giving this as a homework to you. Special values of price elasticity of demand we have already discussed. Uh, if the uh, demand is perfectly elastic, uh, sorry, perfectly inelastic, that means change in price. That means even a 10 paisa change in price, 10 cents change in price is also not leading the demand to change. So it is perfectly inelastic. Perfectly elastic. Just 10 cents change in price is leading to a very high change in demand. That is perfectly elastic. It is also called as infinitely elastic. If the change in demand, if the change in price is lead, leads to equivalent change in demand, unitary, unitary elastic. Okay. Now. Now, while this may seem counterintuitive, it does actually happen in real life. Such goods are referred to as Giffen paradox. So what are they saying about, about Giffen goods? These are against the theory of law of demand. What law of demand says when the price increases, the demand should decrease, right? But there is something which is not uh, like applicable to these goods. When the price increases, the demand here also increases. How? We are speaking about Giffen's goods, basic items for which 
uh, like uh, demand goes up when prices rise because of lack of close substitutes. OK, there is no substitute for them. What happens? See when in UK uh, like the people of UK, they are dependent on bread, right? Bread is their staple food. They can survive without meat, but they cannot survive without bread. OK, so the meat prices were going very down and the bread prices were going high, but still they were buying more breads because this is their staple food because there is no close substitute to bread, right? Second, see UK people are not like are uh, like uh, like like us Indians like we can shift to rice or some other thing. They are just having uh, proper stable staple food uh, food like you know uh, bread OK and Veblen goods are something which is you know diamond I can say diamond diamond is something whose uh, uh, like Kohino diamond is priceless right in the world. So how much is the high price of diamonds that much is the demand for diamonds. How much is the less price of diamonds that much is the less demand for diamonds. Just go for this question please. Same comes to Rolex watches, bread, rice and wheat. Go to this. We will move next. Yes, sir, done. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Factors affecting the price elasticity of demand. See, these are the factors which have an impact on elasticity of demand. That is availability of substitutes. So when the close substitutes are available, people will shift to the substitute when the price increases, right? Time horizon, competitors pricing may make us to shift to a better price, luxuries and necessities. So this can affect the elast price elasticity of demand. That means a small change in price, let's say a 10 cents change in price can lead to very less purchase of luxuries, right? but not necessities. You, 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 you can't change your uh, uh, like purchase of necessities. Percentage of income spent on good can decrease or increase habit also. If you like something very much, even a very high increase in price can also uh, not stop you from purchasing or buying that. Many people like some food like pizza or something, even though the prices are high, they buy. Income elasticity demand has already been explained to you how a person uh, person's demand would change with changes in income levels. So I have already given you the example of the chips packet. OK, uh, so income elasticity of demand says the change the responsiveness of demand with respect to changes in income, which is something different from price. Right? It is a it is a another factor which can have an impact on quantity demand. So you can see, I gave an example. Someone is earning one lakh rupees. Someone is earning ten thousand rupees per month. He can buy just one chips packet, but and the price is uh, like thirty rupees. But something someone is earning one lakh can buy ten chips packets at the same price. Okay, that is the income elasticity. So. An individual, an indication of responsiveness or demand to changes in household incomes. How the demand responds to changes in income. So if your income is high, you will be buying more, right? So demand for a good is income elastic if income elasticity is greater than one. There are luxury, these are luxury goods. That means if your income increases, you buy more of that goods, right? Even though the price increases, doesn't matter. If income is increasing, you are demand for luxury goods is increasing and it goes more than one. It is inelastic. It is elastic. Sorry, it is elastic. More than one is elastic. Less than one is inelastic. Zero is no elastic. 
Demand for a good is income inelastic if income elasticity is between zero and one. Less than one is I already told you. These are normal goods or necessities. See, when your income is very high, you try to buy something which is like very luxury. You don't go for, you know, basic things. Someone whose income is 10 lakhs will go for Rolex watch. Why he'll go for Titan? Titan is a necessity. Rolex is luxury. So for inferior goods, you show less demand, right? So change in quantity demand takes the form. So, you know, there can be a shift in demand. I already told you shift in demand. OK, we discuss this point. There's a real life example. Please go for this. So, you know, when you are having very high income levels, you'll prefer air travel rather than bus or uh, rail travel, right? So just go for this. What is this example saying? Hello. Yes, sir. What is this example saying? That uh, bus travel is cheaper than the air or a rail travel, and uh, but it but takes still, longer. But still, yes. yeah, if the income is increasing, they don't go for bus, right? Yes, sir. Then you can go for this homework. It's a theory question only. See, I'm giving question only after understanding your knowledge level. OK. So will you do this? Yes, sir. OK. Cross elasticity of demand is nothing but the quantity demand uh, like uh, of one particular product. Uh, like, you know, a measure of responsiveness of demand for one good changes to changes in price of another good. That means tea and coffee. If tea prices are increasing, then the demand for coffee will go up, right? If the tea price are increasing, the demand for coffee goes up. So how the uh, how like the quantity demand of one good changes with changes in the price of another good, correct? Did you understand this? You can take a B. So the increase in the price of a leads to increase in the demand of B. So here that is only possible with substitutes and complements. And for unrelated goods, zero. There is no responsiveness. OK, tea and oil have no uh, relationship, right? So percentage change in quantity demand of good A with respect to percentage change in price of good B. There's a real life example. Please go for this. So assume that bread and butter complements if the price of bread increases demand for uh, bread and then in turn butter will. Decrease why? See there are a lot of eatables available, right? So if the bread price is increasing very high, people will look into some other alternative or uh, something other they will buy, right? So the yes, demand sir. demand for bread will uh, like, you know, what happens? Price increases, demand uh, decreases, and decreases. butter demand will also decrease. Yeah. Now, long run and short run curves. See, many short run curves can lead to one long run curve. Okay. Marginal cost is nothing but suppose you have 100, you bought 100 units or you purchase 100 units. Now, extra one additional unit you want to buy or you want to produce or you want to, you want to produce or you want to buy. Okay. So the extra cost which you are paying for this extra one additional unit is called as marginal cost. OK. So 100 and 101. So the ex so the price which you are paying for the extra one unit here is nothing but your um, your marginal cost or what you're incurring to produce it. OK. If you buy that's cost for you, right? Marginal revenue is nothing but the extra one dollar you are earning for selling one additional unit of 
product to the number of products which you have already sold to your customer. Suppose I sold 100 units to my customer and extra next to one unit I am selling. So this the difference here is nothing but marginal revenue. OK, did you understand the concept? So the cost which you are incurring for buying one additional unit to the given number of units what you already have and the revenue what you are generating from the extra one unit uh, to the uh, to already sold number of units uh, in your business is nothing but marginal revenue. Marginal cost is the cost which you are incurring for buying an additional unit of product OK to the already existing number of products which you already have. So the difference amount here, suppose you paid 10,000 for this and for extra one unit you are paying 10 rupees. So this becomes 10,010. So the difference is 10 rupees, that is marginal cost. OK, that's what. And same is the case with marginal revenue. For extra additional unit, whatever uh, the price you are generating in form of revenue by selling extra unit to the already existing units which you have already sold is nothing but marginal revenue. Now short run supply curve. So we are into the last topic uh, curves. OK. So you see the supply curves here. A firm's short run average cost curve is U shaped curve. As initially as you know, like why it is U. See if the output rises, the cost also increases, right? The average cost falls. Average. See, there's a difference between average cost and normal cost. So as the output is increasing, if you produce in bulk, the average cost will be decreasing or increasing. It will be decreasing, right? For example, there is a lorry. In this lorry, if you send one unit to your friend of some uh, product, you are paying uh, thousand rupees for the lorry charges. So for one unit, you are incurring transportation charge of thousand. In this, if the same lorry takes ten units, so for per unit, you are paying thousand. I understand for but. For per unit, how much you are incurring? 100 rupees. So in the same way, if you send 10,000 units, like 1,000 units, you are incurring just 1 rupee. So you always like to send 1,000 units, right? Please tell me. See, if you send 1,000 units through the, through the transporter, you are incurring just 1 rupee. You would like to send in that way or not? I am asking a question. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, because if you transport in bulk, the cost will be less. So if you manufacture in bulk, your average price, your average cost will fall. Due to economies of scale. So economies of scale is nothing but using the best resources to reduce the cost. However, at a certain point represented by the bottom of U, that means this U shape curve bottom. If production increases further, the average cost starts to rise again due to diseconomies of scale. That means what happens at a certain point represented by the bottom of you. So if you come here, see what happens is your average cost should fall, right? It is falling, but to this point only it is falling. Beyond this point, what is happening? Your cost is increasing. Please tell me yes or no. Yes, sir. Yeah, in this U shaped curve, you see here the cost is falling. Till this point it is the least, but from here again it is starting increasing. That is because this economies of scale. Here you are not able to uh, like utilize the resources what you have in the best possible manner. OK. OK, so what happens is. What happens if this lorry has a capacity? See what happens is let's say. Uh, if I have to give you an example, see something. Let's say this is a machine. You have employed two operators for this. You are paying for two operators. Those are enough to operate this machine. If you appoint 10 operators, you are paying extraordinary cost, right? So for two operators, it was more than enough. And the cost, what were, what were you incurring was ideal because they were able to maintain the machine. But if you overdo on something, you are you are incurring very high cost, right? Additional cost. If you are having 10 labors for this two machine, which is not required unnecessarily, then your cost is increased, right? In the same way, to some extent, whatever you produce, your cost will be least. But beyond that, if you go go like uh, go on producing, then your cost 
because uh, will increase because this due to this economies of scale because you know if you produce very much go down rent will increase insurance will increase some cost and additional labor or something additional transportation because one lorry cannot take that entire load right thousand was okay for one lorry if i have 10000 goods i have to take two lorries or three lorries right so my cost will ultimately increase now the marginal cost curve so how are the curves behaving so for every additional unit your cost will increase right so the marginal cost curve lies below the average cost curve so here we have these are the properties this is the marginal cost curve when whenever you are just uh, going on increasing the quantities what happens for extra additional quantity you will be paying extra cost so your marginal cost is increasing your average cost will reduce first to till this level this is the price at which uh, like uh, what this is the price or cost okay this is the least cost okay least cost beyond this if you produce you are incurring high cost right i have explained you right now and now so marginal cost curve initially lies below the average cost curve but right but starts to rise steeply it passes through the average cost curve at the bottom of u shape then rises more steeply than average cost because why more steeply see because what happens for when you see here for quantity one the cost was somewhat less but when you have increased the quantity the cost is increasing and it is increasing very highly okay okay it's not like it's it's like somewhat flatter somewhat flatter like it's like it's not like this it's like this it's it's increasing like anything average cost curve first it is decreasing then increasing so more steeper marginal cost curve if we assume that a single constant selling price for all firms that let's say you are taking a single constant selling price for all the companies then firms average revenue average revenue is nothing but number of uh, like 10000 if they have uh, generated in revenue divided by 10000 units so on an average for one unit 10 rupees like that average revenue and marginal revenue will be identical what they are saying is if the price is same like they, this is the price this is the price this is the price right we have already discussed in case of perfect competition which competition please tell me hello perfect competition in perfect competition for the same price all are buying different different units right for the price of 10 rupees they are they are okay to buy 10 kgs 20 kgs 30 kgs 40 kgs the price is constant here so they are saying this price so what they are saying is if we assume that a single constant selling price of for all firms that is a feature of perfect competition where all firms are selling the goods at one single price then a firm's average revenue average revenue is equal to demand curve is equal to marginal revenue okay they all are identical that means for a one single constant fixed price if every firm see there is a firm a firm b firm c firm d they are selling at 10 rupees 10 rupees 10 rupees 10 rupees so what happens the price is same yes whatever they earn in average will be same yes and for extra additional unit whatever they are quoting is also the same 10 rupees for one unit if you if they are selling one unit for 10 rupees the second unit also they will be selling for extra 10 rupees right the diff so i understand for two units it is 20 for one it is 10 the difference is 10 right yes or no yes sir so all are same right so i have explained you right now so if a firm wishes to maximize profit it always produce the quantity such that marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue beyond this they can always try to maximize their profits if these two are same for extra additional unit whatever the extra cost you are incurring and for extra additional unit whatever the extra revenue you are generating if they are same then there is a scope to maximize your profit in the future so if a firm producing less than q1 less than this then the marginal cost is less than the marginal revenue yes why because 
if they are producing nothing, then the cost hasn't been incurred, right? So marginal cost here is less than the marginal revenue. This is the revenue, right? Revenue curve, marginal revenue. These are this curve. These are cost curves, but this is marginal revenue. If a firm is producing less than Q1, then marginal cost less than marginal revenue. So if the cost is less, you have profits, right? You can make profits. Here you can make profits. The curve is like this. Here you can make profits because the revenue is more, the cost is less. But beyond this, it becomes tough for you to make profit. That's the same thing they're saying. If a firm is producing less than Q1, then marginal cost is less than marginal revenue. Producing one more unit increases total revenue by more than it increases cost. Yes. It is worth producing more to increase profit. So if that's the case, if I take like this, if it is zero, nothing. If it's one unit, I'm in profit. Two units, I'm in profit. Three units, I may not be in profits. So till here, if I produce one or two units, I am always in profits, right? Yes, sir. Because my marginal revenue is more than my marginal cost. And till here, I have the scope. Till here, because both the curves are touching. Beyond that, my cost is increasing. Then what happens is the price should change the price should change the price for p for p1 price i cannot make more profits then my price should change from p1 to p2 and then i can make profits in this area then again here again it is touching this point so again i uh, so again what happens i cannot earn profit so again the price has to change from p2 to p3 so again i can make profits here right so then again no scope or it goes on goes on goes on once output exceeds Q1, then marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue. OK, and then there is no profit. There's loss. So that's the reason why they said that profit maximization can only happen when my marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So profit will reduce if you further increase your output. Beyond beyond which level when marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue till that time only you can earn profits, right? If you they're saying uh, profit would fall if output increase. Yeah, the profit till here only you have profit. Beyond that, there's a cost. No profit at this price, right? So we can see in the figure above that at price P1, the firm supplies Q1 output because the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. When price rises to P2, the output increases to Q2. That's what. So it's not only the price, the quantity should also change. So that's what. See. When the price is P1, till here there is profit because one unit, two unit, three units or Q1, only till here the profits can be made in this zone. In this zone, how much ever they want, they can produce. Beyond this, they cannot earn profit at this price. The price has to change and the quantity demand will also increase, right? It will become Q2. Now for Q2, the price is P2. Be below this, any units for this price, for P2, from 0 to Q1, all this is profit zone. Okay, But from here, again, they will incur losses. So again, the price should shift to P3 and the quantity should shift to Q3. That's what. Then entire area becomes profitable at P3 price. Cost plus pricing. See, what do you mean by cost plus pricing? The cost plus pricing is nothing but you have a cost, right? So this is your profit zone. For any quantities, the price, the, the cost is decreasing. It has become minimum here. Again, it is rising. Till here it is economies of scale. Here it is diseconomies of scale, right? This is the area where you can make profits at the price P1. So between Q1 and Q2, any quantities you can produce in this area, right? So cost plus pricing is nothing but cost price plus profit gives you selling price. So the this idea of marginal cost curve representing the supply curve is 
traditional theory of firms short run supply curve this is a short run supply curve in trend in front of you however more recent theories of firm incorporate a cost plus pricing approach under a cost plus pricing approach a firm adds profit margin i told you to its average cost this is the cost like least cost at any level of output in order to establish its selling price this alternative theory produces a horizontal supply curve now so here your supply curve is this price the profit is equal to supply the profit profit is the gray area supply is this this is your supply curve that means for a price of p1 see please understand any businessman would like to earn profits and they will supp only supply goods if they are profitable so at the price p1 this is the supply curve why this is the supply curve please tell me they are ready to supply any units between q1 and q2 because they are making profits in this area please tell me yes or no yes sir yeah if now the price has to change the quantity supplied should also change from q3 to q4 they are ready to supply any number of units between this two at this price okay yes sir yeah because they'll make profits and your average revenue should be more than your average cost see this is your average cost right this is your ac this is your ar and ar is nothing but this part of ar is the supply curve this part of the ar is your supply curve and ar if this is ar this is ac if ar is more than ac you are in profits average revenue more than average cost or equal also that's okay but beyond that you are having high cost because of this economies of scale and all this short run curves will lead to long run see this is short term diagram right so long run will be in this way only this way this one again one curve 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 so all this if you club it is long run curve right so everyone would like to supply if ar is more than ac either in long run or short run due to diseconomies of scale only the losses the firm will incur losses diseconomies of scale is nothing but not proper utilization of resources or using uh, outdated technology to make the goods or management is not efficient in all those cases fine so we are done with this chapter tomorrow's topic is going to be now this is this was a technical topic now no technical topic simple business organization structure tomorrow we'll begin and we'll wind up this okay thank you any doubts please bring to my notice tomorrow thank you